Hey, I'm Josh Smith, and I own Josh Smith Knives. And I get a lot of people asking me how we get the Damascus pattern that's on the end of these bars that you see when people are forging. How do we get the end, that pattern on the end of that bar onto the flat face of a knife? And there's several ways to do that, and I'm going to demonstrate just a couple today, a couple of the simpler ones. Um, and I'm going to be using a really cool machine called a rolling mill. And I'm going to be taking this little piece of steel right here, and we're going to be turning that into a blade, or bolsters, or a guard, whatever you want to use it for. Um, so we're going to be etching the ends of these, we'll show them to you, and then we're going to roll them out. Okay, so we I've ground off this... Uh, I've ground off this steel off the end of the bar here, and you can't see any pattern right now. But if I just take that bar, stick it in some acid right here, this is ferric chloride, just for a second or two, and I pull it back out, you can actually see really fine pattern in there. And that one's going to be a little tougher to see right now, but I'll do this one here. We'll, we'll drop this one in, pull it out. I'm going to maybe let that just sit in there a little longer. Oh yeah, look at that pattern. So we're going to slice this end off, and we're going to roll that out into a Damascus blade. Okay, so we got to figure out how much steel we need to cut off the end of the bar. And there's actually a mathematical formula. You can just wing it and guess, but if you've gone to all the work to make this Damascus steel, we should actually try to conserve what we can. So we figure out our blade size, which I've got about seven eighths by three and a quarter, three and three quarters long, by about uh, an inch and a quarter wide. So uh, what I'm going to do that that comes out to 0 0.410 cubic inches of steel. So I figure out what I need by doing a little bit of math. It's just the length times width times height. And I figure in a little bit extra for loss, which I've got on here. I've, I've, I usually add about 10%, which should be plenty. So what I'm going to end up with is about a half inch long piece by about five eighths by an inch and a quarter. So you can, you can do that math and figure that out and actually save. If, 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 this is, if you can get a blade out of this, then it's, and that's a, maybe a $2,000 pocket knife, it's definitely worth saving every quarter inch of steel that you can when you can do it. Okay, we have a handle welded on these little pieces of steel. I've got four of them. We're going to roll out here. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in. I just have to worry about my orientation. I got to make sure that the side of the blade that I want up is facing the right way when I go to roll it. But let's let's talk about that rolling mill a second. Matt Wh Matt Whitmus built this rolling mill in Washington. You can't buy him anymore. He doesn't build them anymore. Uh, I was really lucky to have the first one that he built, or maybe maybe the second one. But anyway, you can adjust your, your up and down height of the rolls with this crank handle right here. And you can see the thickness of the steel right there. So when I crank this handle, that tells you how many thousands thick the steel is. So when this is on, we'll turn this on here. If I pull the handle, it pulls the steel back towards me push on it, it rolls it through. So just back and forth. And then as soon as I'm out, I crank the handle down, in and out. So you're going to see me do quite a bit of, I give about a, a half a crank or a quarter of a crank. As that steel gets thinner, you got to take less and less. It's more of a percentage. It's like 10% of the thickness of the steel. You don't want to be taking half of the thickness of the steel away because you can you can stress fracture crack that steel tear your welds apart it's not good so you can really do some damage now the advantage to a rolling mill is that all your length when you're when you're rolling 
all your steel moves in the direction of those rolls. It doesn't widen. And that's fantastic for a lot of what I do. However, some of these I'm going to want to be wide. I'm going to want to widen them a little bit. They're too narrow. So that's when you're going to see me go into that rolling mill at a 45 or maybe even completely sideways. And I'm trying to get width for that blade, length and width. Once I get my width, then it's all length from that, on, that point forward. Just come out of this forge here. Uh, looks like I'm pretty straight. Nice and straight, nice and clean. And my rolling mill says that I am 128 thousandths thick on that dial indicator. So let's run this. I got 128 thousandths on the money. That's pretty impressive. Took me, what, three heats? Maybe four heats, and I went from that little block, four heats, from a little block of steel to a folder blade, 128 thousandths. I'll take seven or eight thousandths off both sides, maybe 10, and I'll be down to 100 thousandths thick folder blade clean, perfect steel. about 20 minutes of forging or less. We got three folder blade sized pieces of steel out of a little block of steel like that. So it's pretty incredible what a rolling mill will do and how wasting good Damascus steel is kind of crazy to do. So I try to conserve it where I can. Um, we can take the same principle and just cut bigger slices off of a bigger block and roll them out and get fixed blade knives as well. They don't have to just be folders. Um, but that's an example of what you can do with just a piece of scrap. Three scraps, three really, really nice Damascus blades. Let's go grind them off and see what they look like. Okay, we have ground off that little 
piece of steel, one of the four that we just went out and rolling milled, or three actually that we ran through the rolling mill. And uh, again, this was an example of being able to just cut the end off of a bar and roll it out instead of doing a complicated tiling process and whatnot. This doesn't always work on every pattern. And you're gonna see probably on this pattern, it stretches it out. Some patterns you don't wanna stretch and other patterns look really cool. Um, so let's see what this one looks like. I have no idea. This is always the coolest part of making Damascus steel. Is right here right now. Oh yeah, that's cool. See now it stretched these diamonds way out. Look at that. That's really cool. That's kind of a diamond stretch, stretch diamond look. But I mean that is really neat and super easy to do. Once you get that pattern made on the end of that bar, cut it off and stretch it out. And look at that. That is some badass Damascus steel right there. All from just a little scrap of steel. So that's why you don't throw scrap Damascus away if it's got nothing wrong with it. That's gonna be a really, really nice little folding knife blade. So if you don't have a rolling mill at home, you can use a hammer, you can use a press, you just gotta use a lot bigger, thicker pieces. Uh, the rolling mill is a lot finer and stretches it much quicker. And you gotta have a lot more accounted for loss when you use a press or a hammer. Uh, the rolling mill is very efficient. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, stay tuned, we're gonna be doing some more coming up soon. I'll get you into the grinding room and into the finish shop. I'll show you some cool stuff. Thanks again.